All right, so we want to find force of gravity between Earth, right here, here, and the Moon. That's what we're trying to find. Um, so we're going to need to know a couple things. We need to know the distance. That distance is, get my cheat sheet here, 3.8 times 10 to the 8th meters. Remember this scientific notation, so that means eight decimal places past this, so many, 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 many meters. So this makes it more convenient for us. Uh, the mass of the Earth is about 6.0 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and the mass of the Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. Now stop freaking out. I will give you these numbers when you need to know them. You don't have to memorize any astronomical figures. Um, so to get this, we're actually going to take the relationship we had before, m1, m2, over d squared. Before we had it proportional to the force. Now we're going to make it an actual exact equation. Um, and to do that, we need just a constant, just a number. We always multiply by what we call big G. If we always multiply by that number, we'll make, as long as we use kilograms and meters, we'll make this work out to a force in newtons. All right, so that's the equation we're gonna use. And I'll probably jump back to this slide every now and then when we need the numbers. Um, we'll do this on a couple different slides. I'm gonna keep this up on the side. So let's, again, start with our F equals G, M1, M2, over D squared. Sometimes you'll see G out front, separate. Um, you can either multiply that after you're all done doing this, or you can include, include it with the numerator right there. Either way should work. So whichever way you'd rather do it, doesn't really matter. I'm going to include it in the top, so I have G, M1 times, G times M1 times M2, all divided by distance squared. So G, in case you're wondering, is our gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Um, and that number will always be that number. That is that way only because we decided to measure things in kilograms and decided to measure things in newtons and didn't bother to pay attention to the astronomical sense and what that became. So anyways, let's start plugging in numbers. We have, a, we have our equation, so we have g, 6.67, times 10 to the negative 11th. We have mass 1. Now, it doesn't matter which, which one is which. I'm going to make mass 1 the Earth. I'm going to make mass 2 the Moon. You can use Me and Mm if you want to. Um, it doesn't matter which order they go in, as long as they're both there. 6.0 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. You know, leaves yourself some space for this, because these problems tend to get big. All right, so my distance between them was 3.8 times 10 to the eighth meters squared. Do not forget to square the distance. Don't forget to square the distance. Dear God, don't forget to square the distance, because everybody forgets to square the distance. All right, so we have numbers in scientific notation. We're multiplying, we're dividing. How do we deal with all of these? Well, let's look at, let's just multiply the front of each one, these numbers out front. We can deal with those together, and then separately we'll put all of the powers of 10 together as well. But this is all multiplication, so it doesn't matter what order I do it in. So I'm going to keep color for you coordinated here. I have 6.67 times 6.0 times 7.35. All right, so it's just multiplying these three numbers out front across. And then I have all my powers of 10. So times 10 to the negative 11th, times 10 to the 24th, and times 10 to the 22nd. All right. And all of that is divided by my distance squared. 
Now when you square the distance, it's basically multiplying it times itself. So I'm going to write that out first, just so I don't forget it. So it'd be 3.8 times 3.8, and the power is a 10, put in red, times 10 to the eighth, times 10 to the eighth. And now this becomes much more convenient for us, because we can just multiply the numbers just like we would. Numbers in blue, like we would always multiply numbers in blue. We multiply that out, we get 294, I'm not going to round yet, 0.147. That's 6.67 times 6 times 7.35. But what about the powers of 10? Now if we have, if we're multiplying powers of 10, 10 to the 24th is already 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 24 times. 10 to the 22nd is the same thing, 24 times. 10 to the negative 11th would technically be 1 over 10 to a bunch of times. But if we're multiplying with these exponents, and they all have the same base, they all have the same base of 10, what we can do is take negative 11 plus 24 plus 22, add those up, and that will give us the power of 10 it would be. So negative 11 plus 24 plus 22 should give us a 10 to the 35th to the 35th altogether. And that's what makes these multiplying these huge numbers so much easier doing it in scientific notation. So we can just multiply the front, add up the exponents on the back, and easy breezy, almost done. All right, so let's do the same thing for the distance. 3.8 times 3.8 would give us 14.44. And the power of 10, just like before, we have times 10 to the eighth, times 10 to the eighth. So 8 plus 8 is 16, so we have 10 to the 16th power. And again, all of this is equal to the force we're trying to look for. All right, so if we were multiplying, we added the exponents, now we're dividing. Now our blue numbers, we would divide like we'd always divide regular numbers. That would be 20.37 now I'll round because I want decent numbers here. Now if we are dividing numbers with exponents, they have the same base, then we can just subtract the exponents. Um, so we'd have 35 minus 16 should give you, double check my math, 10 to the 19th. We have 10 to the 19th. Alright, so we're done, right? careful. The number we got is the force measured in newtons, and technically that is that number. However, it's not in scientific notation. Um, we only want usually one decimal in front, or one number in front of the digit in front of the decimal, excuse me. So we need to move this over one. So to really say this correctly, I'm going to move this over here to the side now because I ran out of room at the bottom. But to write this correctly, the force would be 2 point zero three seven times ten to the now we took a ten out of here and we put it um, we moved the decimal point to the left which means we need to increase the exponent here. It's basically taking like taking a ten out of the twenty and putting it over on the right hand side instead. It'd be like two point oh three seven times ten times ten to the nine nineteenth. So we wrap that up all in one. So we end up with the uh, force of gravity between the Earth and the Moon, 2.037 times 10 to the 20th Newtons. Again, if we do everything in kilograms and meters, and we use our gravitational constant up here, then we should get a force in Newtons.